Trading options with a small account can be absolutely brutal, but I'm going to show you the three step process and how to do this specifically trading the spot. So let's not waste any time. Like subscribe, do what you got to do. Let's get to it. Okay, now before we dive in, I want to explain a few things. We're going to be going over how do you overall trade the trend. This is going to be really geared towards smaller individuals or smaller accounts. And you need to understand a few things. Your goal needs to be to protect your portfolio because you need to understand there's a reason you're small. Like you're, you're just setting up, you're just starting. And those beginning months are the hardest. And I don't want to BS you. I don't want to lie to you. So when we're going through this, I'm going to keep it really fundamental and like really basic. Now there's building blocks on top of this and we have other stuff on the video. So check that out if you want it. And this is like all going to be for free. And that's what I'm doing on this channel. Like the main channel option drops is geared towards daily news, what I'm doing, you know, big money, things along those lines. But this is for those beginning traders, like the foundation of where you have to start. So again, this is going to be a building block and we're going to get deeper and deeper into this. So I just want you to understand that. Now, the few things we're going to cover are two indicators that I use every single day. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I'm tying them together using volume, which is kind of like the missing link to almost all forms of trading, in my opinion. But we're not going to be using any crazy indicators like you're not going to be going too deep into supply and demand. Supply and demand is very important and I recommend you watch those videos on how I teach that but in the beginning I believe this will be like your gradual steps because you need to start understanding the basics before you can start really understanding the more in-depth complex ways of trading okay so I just want you to understand that I and mean, don't worry my face isn't gonna be up here the whole time I don't know if I already said that but I'm gonna keep it really short and to the point and try to get through this as quickly as possible but again let me tell you one more thing so I want to take a second and go over a few things here now when we're stepping into this I'm not gonna be explaining anything to do with supply and demand this is the basic strategy as you're getting into it you can start adding in supply and demand but again I want to focus on keeping it really, really simple for you right now. Now, when we're doing this, we want to focus on only trading the trend because the basis and rules for me when it comes to trading is protecting my account at all times. That means I'm not going to go against what's working and overall how the market's moving. I want to put myself in the best opportunity to win. So I know you're thinking, well, I'm not going to be trading the downside. I'm not going to be trading the upside. To a certain extent, no, you don't want to be taking 30 trades a day. There's a reason your account is small. It's probably because you're a beginner. So focus on what is working, focus on what's getting the best moves. And that's normally what the trend is doing, whether it be to the up or to the downside. So 2022, I was focused primarily on trading the downside as we got into 2023. So far, it's been all focused on the upside. And you'll notice your winners on the upside will greatly outweigh your winners to the downside. And that's the way it should be. So you want to focus on what what works the most and what works the best. All right, so the first thing we're doing is going over the trend. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you only want to trade the trend when you're beginning. And this may sound very simple. This may sound counterintuitive. Less is more when it comes to trading. You have a small account. This has got to be your focus. This has got to be what you're doing, okay? You only want to focus on this trend. Now, when we jump in here, so we can go back to like 2000, you know, all the way back 2020 through 2020 to the beginning of 2022. We were in a clear uptrend. Now I wanna show you the focus here. If you were primarily trading the upside here, you were making substantial amount of money, just crazy amounts of money, right? If When you would try to trade the downside, the downside money was far less. Meaning, if I was trading to the downside, the maximum opportunity to make money or the maximum profit that I had was very low. Let's say I was gonna make 50 bucks to the downside, but to the upside, I had an opportunity to make a hundred bucks. So it makes sense to focus more on trading the upside. Does that mean to always buy every single dip? No, but it means to follow the strategies that we're going to be taking into place here. Now you fast forward into 2022 and we look at what's happening here and you clearly were trading in a down, you know, it was a clear downtrend up to the beginning of 2023, right? Just clearly to the downside. So you were focused more on trading the downside. Now, granted, there were opportunities to trade the bounce back up, but if you traded during this year, you remember all the volatility, all the big moves were primarily towards the downside, right? So we would jump down, we pop up, jump all the way down, pop back up. But most of the time was spent dropping up until, you know, we got into 2023. And then fast forward into this year, exactly 2023. And you can see the trend has kind of flipped back towards the upside. And something like on the NASDAQ, you can really see what's happening there. And you can see that this is kind of the more the focus of it's just a clear uptrend. But again, no matter what you're trading, QQQ, SPY, for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on SPY. You want to focus on the trend. 
especially when you're at, at a small account. People are going to lie to you. They're going to tell you you need to focus on over trading. Nope, that's a lie. Don't focus on that. Focus on the trend. So for the sake of this video, what we're focused on right now is clearly trading the upside. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do this using the 90 MA and the VWAP. But let's go over one more thing. So as we mentioned in the first part of the video, I, I'm not really going to be going over too much supply and demand. Now, there's a little bit of that kind of like rooted in this. And you'll see that when you're identifying the way the trend is moving. Uh, but for the most part, when you're day trading, you're really going to be using these two little indicators. And that's like your little cheat sheet. I don't like, you know, all these crazy moving averages, the V, you know, not the VWAP. VWAP is awesome. We're going to use that every single day, uh, but you're not going to be using, you know, oscillators and all these things like those are all based on past information. When you're scalping and day trading, you're focused on what's working right now. And so when we're looking at this, the 90 MA and VWAP work every single day in every single session. So there's a reason you got to focus and like use these nonstop. And I'm going to show you exactly how let's go. Okay, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using TradingView. I do use TrendSpider. I recommend TOS. Yeah, yeah, there's tons of like free substitutes out there. Um, but TrendSpider is just like universally what everyone's using. So I just want to explain that on here. If you don't know how to get these indicators, I'm going to show you right now. The 9 EMA and the VWAP. First of all, you're going to go over to EMA. It's all you type in. It's the first one moving average exponential. You click that one. We're also going to get in the VWAP here as well. The top one, I don't want to use anything from anyone else. You want to use the basic versions of all of these okay now we're also going to go in here really quickly to the ema i'm going to change this to red i just like having it at red it should also be at the nine it's already there that's it that's literally it i want to make it a little bit thicker so you can see it um, and then we're also going to go to the vwap change this i'm going to get rid of the bands on some brokers some platforms they add bands i don't know why uh, but you want to get rid of those as well now we're also going to focus most of our trading to be here on the five minute or the one minute and i'm going to go into the one minute exactly why and how but I'm looking at volume typically on lower time frames. But when you're doing most of your charting, you want to focus on the five minute, five minute, 15 minutes. That's, that's my bread and butter. You start going into swing trades, you know, holding for an extra day, use the one hour, use the two hour. Uh, but when you're looking at just getting in, getting out, this is your best friend. Now, when we look at what's happening here on SPY, we've had some kind of clunky movement over the past few days. You can see this is not the best example, right? So I always recommend two. And you're going to notice something, right? So when we go to the daily, you're going to go to the higher time frame to identify the trend. So we can see the trend. In my opinion, you can you can notice it's to the upside, right? We can agree it's clearly to the upside. But when we get into these downsides, and this is why you don't trade that, right? So you go to the five minute, and if you watch my five minute 90 EMA video, you want to trade when you're grinding on top or below the 90 EMA. And so when you're trending back down to the downside or getting more reversal you can see that it's a lot of chop back and forth over and above, you know, you're gonna go above and below, above and below the 90 MA. And that's just not beneficial to you. So, but when you're trading to the upside, it's really clear. And this is what you're looking for. Like when we go back to last week, when we had all that great movement. So what you're getting here is you're tracking below the VWAP, which is your blue line. But let's get rid of the VWAP just so you can see really clearly here what you're looking for. You're you're looking for pullbacks, but then you're looking to get back on top of the 90 MA. Once you get on top of that 90 MA, you can see you start to grind it for usually the rest of a session or the rest of that move up. So we can kind of see here as well. We get a little bit of a flag as you can kind of see you're pulling back and then you get back on top of that 90 MA and then you grind up into new local highs on the day, which you can see and you start making, you know, from, you know, 430.59 all the way up to 431.59, a whole dollar move there. And then you can see you get back above a little bit of a retrace, you get another flag and then guess what? You get another entry opportunity. When you break back above right here, you mount clearly and then the rest is history as you go back into highs and again the video i have on this will explain really in depth but i want to make sure you're seeing what we're looking at here right over and over you'll see this play out specifically when you're trading the trend that's why i want to make sure that's very clear here you can go back over and over here right so you can see that downside that you get you start to break back up now where this comes in tangent with the vwap is the vwap gives you a very good indicator of when you're gonna start spotting reversals in the market on shorter time frames throughout the day okay so when we look here you can see and i like to use different indicators to kind of give me uh time frames of what's happening so i can get a clear visual so like if you're looking at past time frames it can be hard to see when a day starts like i know 8 30 is the time and ends at three o'clock for me here central okay uh, but sometimes you go in the past it can be difficult because you see gaps up etc so you can use the opens indicator to see what time and things along those lines but a few things we're looking for i'm primarily looking to go long 
or trade the trend. So if I'm either trading the up or the downside, right? So if we're trading the downside, I want us to be below the VWAP, okay? If we're trading the upside, I want us to be above the VWAP right here, right? So I would not be looking to really get into a long here as long as we're below the VWAP, which is this blue line. So I wouldn't have had entry opportunity until you got right above right here, as you can see. So you can start to see how it's playing out. So all back here, I wouldn't have necessarily been interested in trading because you can see that we break VWAP right here, push down. We're still above the 90 MA as we get right here. But this isn't really the opportunity because you can see sellers step back in at that VWAP. And if you've watched my VWAP video, I explained to you. VWAP is the time of where liquidity is getting in on big money at all times. It's traditionally where buyers are stacking back in, sellers are getting back in, sellers are getting out, buyers are getting out. You're going to see it over and over and over. And when you get a cross on top of the VWAP during a day, it's a very good indicator that you're getting a flip in momentum. So what we saw here was really important in my opinion. So let's zoom back out. Let's get rid of all that. So you can see on Friday, uh, June 9th, you can actually see we're pushed down, we're pushing down, we're below VWAP, we get rejected there. This is just like a no trade day for me. Why? Because we're in an uptrend, but we can't get back above VWAP. Okay. Now, the following Monday, we open up, we reject that VWAP, but we get above. Now, this would be a prime time to trade because you're getting above VWAP, you're grinding on top of the 90 MA, and then again, you continue to flag over and over. Now, your exit signal here, in my opinion, this is just something that I use. I want to see around two candles on the five minute 90 MA underneath. Now this would have given you a false signal, but you can also zoom out to around the 15 minute. I don't like going too far out. I'm going to tell you this right now, but the 15 minute will give you a great visual as well. So you can see on the 15, you have one candle, but then you bounce on the VWAP and you slap back up. So this is why it's important to use these in tangent and you'll kind of get a feel. There's never going to be one indicator that tells you exactly when to get in or exactly when to get out. But when you use these in tandem, I believe they give you a very good feel of the market. And you can go back and back test this over and over. In my 90 MA and my VWAP video, I do it all the time. But you can see over and over this plays out over and over so even if you got false stopped out here you would have had another entry opportunity right here at 418 where you broke above mounted and you continue to push back into 422 you can go to lower time frames and scout this out for yourself but again i want to make something very clear you are not trying to trade the downside opportunity here okay that's not your focus here now you're also going to see a few other things and this is where you're identifying the trend and kind of throwing supply and demand in there will help you out but you need to understand that sometimes you're going to get some of these false signals okay you're going to get some of these where you don't really have a clear breakout you're trying to fill a gap but you, they're just not the best opportunities so when you're in like a downtrend like this and as you can clearly see it's a little bit harder to draw because you are not really making the lower lows here as clean as you really want for a downtrend this is a pretty strong reaction that you're seeing here but what you're looking at is you don't want to focus on trading the chop here you want to make sure you're getting back out of this so you want to focus on simple patterns like ascending triangles uh bull flags etc and, and throwing this in tandem and i'm going to show you one more trick when you're using volume to make sure you're getting the best signals there okay now on top of this we've gone over the 90 ma we've gone over following the trend we've gone over the vwap now look Putting it all together, it gets tied back into volume. And volume is going to explain exactly how you trade all of this. It's really connecting all the dots here. And that has got to be the focus here. So you're understanding the trend, understanding it's either to the up or to the downside. You're only trading in that trend direction. Then you're moving into the 90 main VWAP. You understand those. But then volume is going to give you your actual breakouts or when you should be getting in, when you should kind of be getting out as well. Let's dive in. Okay, so this was an example we just used. I'm gonna show you how to spot breakouts and how to spot reversals using volume. And these, again, there's never an end-all be-all indicator that's gonna show you 100% of the time. But these are useful tips and what you can identify as anomalies and everything kind of in between there as well. So the first one is the breakout opportunity. All I did was bring up volume. You can use any volume indicator. There's some really cool ones on TOS as well that I go over. Now. You can see we kind of have this bull flag forming out here on the spy and this is on the one minute i like to use smaller time frames for volume just so i can get the best view of how it's coming in especially when i'm looking at spy okay so when we look at spy and again you have to come into the exact day because always in the 
the, the start of the day and the end of the day, you're gonna have ma massive spikes on the index volume. So it's gonna kind of skew the data. And so when you zoom in here, you can see, what are we looking at here though? I wanna make this really clear. So as you're trending in this flag, in this, whatever pattern you're looking at, we, you, we go over all these on the channel as well. But what you can see here is you are declining in volume as you're moving throughout this, okay? Declining. So as you're moving down here, you have less volume coming into the market. What does that mean? Less sellers are pushing you down than the buyers that were pushing you up, which makes this a weak structure, which makes it a continuation pattern. So what you're looking for here is a break in the trend of the downside volume to the upside. So you see a little bit of selling coming in here, but what happens there? You're trying to break out, sellers try to push you back down, back into this channel, and then right here, guess what happens? A breakout by volume. But what also happens here? You start to get the 90 MA getting above the VWAP as well, and you get action back above VWAP on the, uh, the price of SPY. And then from there, as you can see, you get that breakout all the way back into 431.5. And then this leads for the next day as well, pushing us all the way up into 435 as well, 433, then 435 over the next few days. Now you're gonna notice this continues to happen time and time again. So whenever you're looking at ascending triangles, whatever it may be, right? So my favorite pattern, just to let you know, you have your ascending triangle like this, um, and this is a continuation pattern. So action, you would see the, the, the stock slowly trend like this, continuing getting wicked. You wanna see volume and then increase volume as you break out. One of my favorite patterns that, that exist works over and over to see me mention it in countless videos on the main channel. Okay. You have your, your bull flags as well. Another great one we just went over. You, you see action, you, you, you'll see that push to the upside and then we'll slowly consolidate back down and then increase volume back out, right? That's what you wanna see there. And so this is again, over and over, you're gonna see the, one, the, the same things. But what you wanna see during this time, whether it's to the up or to the downside, and the same in, you know, patterns work just inverted, right? Is you wanna see decline in volume, okay? So if you're making these patterns, you're contracting, you're retracing, you wanna see volume decline and then an increase or a surge in volume as you break structure for that you know, entry opportunity, okay? That's gonna be the money-making side there. Now, I also said when you're looking at reversal opportunity, okay? And what was I meaning by that? And this is where things get a little bit interesting, okay? So, for instance, we have this day here on the 9th of June. And on the 9th of June, we could, we saw, we kind of have almost like a little bit of a double top. We push up, come down, push back up, and then we start dropping. But now what happens here is very interesting. You see an increase of selling and we're pushing down, as you can see. But what happens is, again, you are de you're, you're dropping, and this is not looking good for bulls. This is not. You're, you're clearly making lower lows, lower lows, and lower highs. Volume is decreasing, though. And, and what happens here is you get down here, and then volume just dies. And so when volume dies, as you're clearly making and structuring to a, you know, a downside opportunity adjacent to the trend, that's a clear signal of what you're looking for here. So what you're looking for now, as that volume dies down here, is you're going to be looking for a breakout in volume back to the upside. And so you start seeing buyers come back into the market. And this signifies what you start to get is buyers start to take back control. Now you get a little bit of a battle, but again, you start to see that structure playing back out. And then again, here, you see a little bit more. So we're above the VWAP. And again, some people get a little bit discouraged. They're like, should I get back into a trade? Is the trend really bullish? Now, when you're pushing down like this, we get a one, two, three correction. You're also seeing increased volume down here. So while you're dropping pretty fast, guess what happens as you hit VWAP? You get some of that stopping volume right there. So you get the, the most buying that you have here is actually from buyers and it's at lows. That's a good signal that a reversal is probably in the works. Now, that doesn't mean to go long immediately there. I would be looking again at like something like the five minute, the 90 MA. So when you start to bounce back up, reclaiming the 90 MA and then pushing back up and that's your trade opportunity from there. But again, all these structures are going to play out and they're all going to work in tandem with volume. You're going to, you're going to notice the same thing over and over. And if you haven't watched the previous videos that we do on the 90 MA volume VWAP, I recommend doing so because they all come together there as well. But you're going to notice time and time again, the same structures playing out over and over and over, you know, as you saw here, you know, middle of the day, we're dropping down at noon, right? Pushing down. Then again, stopping volume, 
takes place as you find a bottom and buyers step back into the market, which is an anomaly. This should not be happening. As volume increases to the downside, you're, you're rarely going to see the opposite type of volume come back into play. Key things you're looking for here every single day. That's it. If you got anything out of this, like, subscribe. More content is coming. Plan on getting more personal, more content about exactly how I'm growing my account and teaching you guys along the way. Absolutely free. Have a good one, traders.